All things are possible if you believe. Well, you know, I studied for a long time. I started to study this book, Think and Grow Rich. And he talks about belief in here. He says, you're not ready for what you want until you believe you can get it. I found that the only two sources of reference we can go to to find out anything about ourselves is science and religion. They all say you've got to believe. So I kept figuring out, how do, you, how do you believe? How do you change a belief? Interesting subject, because I'm going to tell you something. Your results are nothing but the manifestation of your belief system. Well, our belief system, now listen carefully, is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently, when we reevaluate a situation, our belief about that situation will change. Seeing yourself make a decision at that point to be resilient, to keep at it, to see the charge come back on your face, to see yourself working through the struggle is the most important visualization you can do. What would you say to yourself when it sucks? Not just see yourself validated. It's about, look, the real truth of achieving any dream is that struggle, that effort, that push. Every time that you have fallen on your face, or you've tried something and failed, or you've gone out and thought you found the love of your life, and then your heart's broken, and then you pick yourself up again, and then you dust yourself, you're building confidence the entire time because confidence is not built on the high days. Confidence is built on the low ones. Confidence is built when you are struggling. Because when you see yourself go for something and fall, when you see yourself try and get knocked down, when you see yourself stand back up after getting abused or traumatized or discriminated against and moving ahead, you are building this reserve within yourself where you know you can rely on yourself, you know you can face hard things and you can keep moving forward. You know you have your own back. So it's in there. Your life has been helping you build it. Now you got to just dig in and tap into it and sh use it to shut that critic up in your head. If you fall down hundred times in a day, what does it matter? For a committed man, there is no such thing as failure. If you fall down hundred times, hundred lessons to be learned. If you commit yourself like this to creating what you really care for, now your mind gets organized. Once your mind gets organized, the way you think is the way you feel, your emotion will get organized. Once your thought and emotion is organized, your energies will get organized in the same direction. Once your thought, emotion and energies are organized, your very body will get organized. Once all these four are organized in one direction, your ability to create and manifest what you want is phenomenal. When we say a joyful world, that means everything that you want has happened. Aristotle wrote in his famous Nicomachean Ethics that the common aim of mankind is to be happy. However, each person defines happiness. One thing we know is that the more confident and the better we feel about ourselves, the happier we are and the more effective we seem to be in everything we do. Self-confidence, however, is really a state of mind based on your belief systems. Belief or faith enables you to act boldly in the face of uncertainty. Confidence enables you to face changes and difficulties and unexpected setbacks with calmness and clarity and allows you to respond more effectively under any circumstance. The law of belief, an important corollary of the law of cause and effect, says that your beliefs become your realities. You do not believe what you see, but you see what you believe. William James of Harvard said that belief creates the actual fact. In the Bible it says, according to your belief, it is done unto you. If you believe strongly enough and confidently enough, your outer world will tend to conform to a pattern consistent with these beliefs. In fact, your world today is largely an outpicturing of your innermost beliefs and convictions. You behave on the outside based on your beliefs on the inside. You see the world around you based on your beliefs about reality. Regardless of whether they are correct, how can you determine your true beliefs? Simple. You can tell what you really believe by observing what you do and what you don't do. You can tell what you believe by listening to your opinions, your conversations, and by noting your decisions. When you truly believe yourself to be an exceptional human being, possessed of remarkable capabilities, you will walk and talk and act that way, and your inner convictions will become your outer reality. As the Bible says, all things are possible to him that believeth. The law of incremental improvement is your key to an unlimited future of success, prosperity, and self-confidence.
doesn't matter where you are starting from. All that matters is where you are going. As Theodore Roosevelt said, do what you can with what you have, where you are. By applying the law of incremental improvement to yourself and your work, you can begin moving upward toward joining the great ones in your field. If you are doing what you love to do, and you are doing it with all your heart, by engaging in continuous personal and professional improvement, you can begin to move forward at such a rapid rate that it will astonish you. There is one small problem that you need to deal with before you become one of the best in your field. Most of us grow up with feelings of inferiority and inadequacy. Because of low self-esteem and selling ourselves short, many of us never even think about becoming excellent at our work. It never even occurs to us that we have the ability to learn anything we need to learn, to be able to do an outstanding job at anything we put our minds to. The fact is that generally speaking, you have the capability to excel at anything that is really important to you. If anyone else has achieved a high level of competence in your field, then so can you. All you have to do is to do the same things over and over until sooner or later you get the same results that they have. I stopped wasting time. That helped a lot. I stopped drinking. I stopped going to bars. I really didn't spend a lot of time with my friends when I had young kids in particular. I had friends and I, I, I saw them, you know, with some degree of regularity, but where I cut corners was more with social life outside my family. So I spent a lot of time with my wife and I spent a lot of time with my kids and I spent a lot of time on my career. And so you have to make choices. And I think those were reasonable choices. I'm not displeased with them. Don't abandon your friendships, but um, but you can certainly look at where you're wasting time and just stop doing things that you know would be a waste of time. So, and I did. And so I had enough room for my marriage and I had enough room for my kids and I had enough room for my career. And, you know, sort of a multi-dimensional career. And I, it was always a challenge to me too, to see how efficient I could get. I concentrated on my marriage and making time for it. I concentrated on spending time with my kids consciously and I concentrated on developing my career. Those were the three elements of my life. And I had some time left over for creative pursuits and, and, and for friends, but most of it was a matter of getting rid of time wastes of any sort, you know, and I just pushed that out of my life, you know, day after day until I wasn't wasting any time or virtually no time. And, you know, I've asked my undergraduates frequently how much time they waste per day and general estimates are like six to eight hours of time they regard themselves as wasting. Like that's a whole career right there, right? So if you just stop wasting time, you can do a tremendous amount, especially if you also try to maximize efficiency. And I always found that incredibly motivating. You know, a, a motivating game. How much can I do in the least amount of time possible? That was, that's fun to try to do that as far as I'm concerned. I know, may, you know, that's maybe a undoubtedly a temperamental thing but but if you're built if you're wired that way that's a great meta strategy become efficient results is the name of the game what other game is there i'm telling you if you'll start with that it's called the process of life change and it doesn't matter how small the process is to start one discipline starts it and then one discipline feeds another feeds another and the first thing you know you've got this whole cycle in an upward positive motion and it's called life change called income change, called health change, relationship with your family change, equities unprecedented that you can have in numbers that will stagger the imagination if you do not curse what's available and start amending what's possible to get the results that you want. I don't think I could put it in any better. He said, it's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens happens to us all that the key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do. And he said, if you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books for you. Do something different like the new health, disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, can change ourselves, we can change what we do.